In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we gather together in prayer today, we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Advent, and the day of the Lord's incarnation draws near. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins so to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you have kept your promise to your people. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you chose to become one like us in all things but sin. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are God who lives among us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life and let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, our Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ, your Son, was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask for a sign from the Lord your God. Let it be deep as the netherworld, or high as the sky. But Ahaz answered, I will not ask, I will not tempt the Lord. Then Isaiah said, Listen, O house of David, is it not enough for you to weary people? Must you also weary my God? Therefore the Lord himself will give you this sign. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised previously through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. The gospel about his son, descended from David according to the flesh, but established as son of God in power, according to the spirit of holiness. Through the resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through him we have received the grace of apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith. 
for the sake of his name among all the Gentiles, among whom are you also, who are called to belong to Jesus Christ, to all the beloved of God in Rome, called to be holy. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet willing to ex- unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home, for it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took his wife into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. During these final days of the Advent season, the church has shifted her focus from the future to the past, from the second coming of Christ to his first coming. And on this fourth and final Sunday of Advent, she invites us to reflect more deeply on the nature of the one whose birth we will celebrate next Sunday. It is very easy to become sentimental at this time of the year. It is a time for many of us to fondly recall Christmases past spent with family and friends, to lose ourselves in a flood of warmth and goodwill, to forget at least for a few days the problems of this world. And it's wonderful that we can do this, but we must never forget that as we celebrate Christmas, we need to give more than just a passing glance to the child in the manger, for he is no ordinary child. He is the Son of God, the eternal King, and his birth is the dawn of our salvation. In our first reading today, the prophet Isaiah tells us that the Lord will offer a sign to his people, namely that the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. In the gospel reading today, the angel that comes to Joseph to explain to him what is happening to Mary repeats these words to Joseph and reminds him and us that Emmanuel is God with us. God is with us. What a wonderful statement. What a powerful gift. With those words of reassurance, Joseph moves beyond fear and doubt and then seeks to do all that the angel of the Lord commanded him. Joseph must serve as an example to us who seek to respond to the gift of a Savior, to the gift of God with us. If we are to truly celebrate his birth, then we too must say yes to his will, not just at Christmas, but throughout the year. It is not always easy to do that. It calls us to humility, to trust, to obedience. 
These are our gifts to him as he gives us himself. May we spend the next week reflecting on how precious a gift was given to us on that first Christmas in Bethlehem and praying for the grace to say yes with our lives as it is offered to us again. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And let us deepen our prayer that we may be faith-filled people as we await the Lord's coming. For our church, that the Advent spirit of joyful hope may inspire our worship and work in every season of the year, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our our prayer. prayer for all who minister to the church, that they may be faithful to God's call to discipleship. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For married couples, that God will give them patience and trust to renew their love for one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For parents and guardians, that they may love their children as God the Father loves all his children. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that the new life of the Messiah may be theirs eternally in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, you sent your word to dwell among us. Hear our prayers, for we long for the fullness of life that Christ will bring. And we pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be accepted by the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, 
sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing this sacrificial victim by whose death 
you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, and to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. And there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
and let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody. You too.